Hello, and welcome to this GleeForge tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over how to fix a bug a good friend of mine found on Tabletop Simulator. Let's say you were trying to make a board, a modular board, and you were using tiles to do it. So here I have my custom tiles. I'm just using a test texture in order to do it. I've got my type set to hex because I want to make a hex board, um, sackable, all that good stuff. I also have my board configured, or rather my grid, sorry, let's see. So I have my grid, the type I've set to a hor uh, horizontal hex. I've got the lines showing just so I can see them. And I've set it just above the defaults of 2 to 2.1. And I've set snapping to the center. So we can make a board like this, right? I have this cloned so I can just do that and they fit just nicely right next to each other. So now I have a hex board of hexes. The problem that he was running into was this. If he pasted another one and stacked them, you can see it doesn't like that. So I looked around a bit. I hadn't really run into this because I hadn't ever thought of stacking hexes when making a modular hex board. You can see Tabletop Simulator does this nice aesthetic thing when you stack tiles where it doesn't really perfectly stack them. It, it shifts them just a bit to show you that it's actually a stack. So I hypothesized that this was what was creating the issue and luckily <laughs> I was right the first time. So let's put our board back to where it was. Oh, I have 15 rotation. There we go. In order to change this, all I did was I took stackable off. Now this might mean a couple of things for you depending on what's going on. For us, it meant that you could very easily fix the problem because now if I stack them, they don't actually do tabletop simulators version of stacking. They do perfect stacking because they're stacking to uh, their snap points on the grid. Which you can see, I've been a little generous with that 2.1. There's small gaps. But I've done that so that it doesn't um, bunch up too much. If I go over and set it back to the two that it was at, let's get this out of the way and rebuild this real quick. Yeah, you can immediately see that there's a problem here. That's not what we want. That's that's not great. So the two point the two point one gave us just that little bit more space. Let's see if two point oh five works. Can we do two point oh five? Yes, we can. All right. 2.05 trying to see how low we can get this little bonus content for the video uh, definitely not 2.05 and keep in mind this um, is a 750 by 750 uh, texture that's being loaded onto the tile so it's it, it's not huge it should be going uh, on one to uh, it should have a radius of one I think that's how they do it Let's see, we got our scale, of course, is going to be one, one, and one because I haven't adjusted that. And we're not going to mess with that. All we're going to do is we're going to bump our grid size until it's usable. So we'll have it on 2.1. Just if you were curious on that, I do need the 2.1 in order for these to stack nice and clean. Uh, an alternative to this, and the second plan that I had if that first uh, turning off stacks didn't work, was to make it so that each of these wasn't a tile, each of these was a hex model, a custom model with a custom texture on top. And I've done that before in order to get around some issues, um, but it takes more effort, right? You have to go get your hex model, you have to import it, you have to make sure the texture is mapped to the top of it properly and the bottom if you want to. Uh, in this case, this solution is straightforward and works within the tabletop simulator realm <laughs> platform. Um, so yeah, this is Tim with GleeForge giving you a quick tutorial on how to make a hex board with tiles that doesn't explode when you try to stack them. Thanks so much for watching and take care.